I'm live. I did it. I'm going to do the countdown because I got something to do. Where's the countdown? Oh, it's, oh, I'm taking too long to get the countdown. Can't find the countdown. Never mind. Let's see. Banners. What's up, friends? Christopher, good night. You're still alive. How's it going? So, so, all right. We're gonna go through this week's books. Um, I, the, my diamond delivery just showed up just now before I clicked go live. So uh, it is not ready. Uh, like nothing has been organized yet. So, oh, thanks. I love loving the hair, says we're into it. Thank you. I appreciate that. My wife did it the other night. Um, so, yeah, uh, I was all set to go with DC stuff, um, but my diamond order just showed up. So I'll take a look at that and see if maybe we can go through that as well. How are you guys doing? Everybody chilling? I had my cell phone set up. I made a lot of changes to the shop last night. I was here real late or I guess real early. Um, and I was going to like show you some of the new stuff in the store, but uh, the way you set the cell, the cell phone up with StreamYard sucks. All right, let's start with DC. First things first. Let me turn on my light. Maha. Got an omnibus. I got the Superman omnibus by Peter J. Tomasi and Patrick Gleason. A really good run on Superman right before I think Brian Michael Bendis took over. Uh, and there's a lot of really good stuff in here. Uh, this has the, Su the Superman by Peter J. Tomasi and Patrick Gleason collects the team's adventures from Superman 1 to 25, 27 to 28, 33 to 39, 42 to 45. Superman Annual Number One, Superman Rebirth Number One, Superman Special Number One, Action Comics 975, 976, 1000, and then Super Sons 11 and 12, and Teen Titans 975 to 976. It matches the Batman and Robin, uh, Peter J. Tomasi and Patrick Gleason omnibus that I have. Uh, and like the covers look really nice next to each other. Uh, let's see. What else do we got? We have a new black label. Well, not a new black label book. It's a, it's a previous black label book, but it's a new issue of said black label book. Um, Christopher Goodnight says, I'm a thriller. Afternoon. I love that run of Superman. Hated it when it ended. Yeah. I like the Bendis stuff too, but the Patrick Gleason and Peter J. Tomasi stuff was... So, other history of the DC Universe. Uh, this is basically a really, really, really good series that shows you the DC history through the eyes of people of color. So, uh, the first one was Black Lightning. The second one was Bumblebee and Mal. And the third one was Katana. And then this one is Rene Montoya. And it's written by uh, John Ridley with art by Giuseppe Camancoli and Andrea Cucci. Cu Cucci? Like, that can't be how you say that word. C-U-C-C-H-I, Cucci? I feel, I feel awkward saying that. You said first things first and it reminded me of lyrics. Ah, okay. And then, uh, okay, so there's two covers to this, John. There's this a cover, which are very nice. And then there's this cover. Check out the colors on that. 
Oh, I digs it. I digs it the most. So that comes out this week. That's that box. And then... We also have this week Superman Action Comics by Philip Kennedy Johnson. And this is number 1031. And it looks like it's continuing the story. I think the idea is that Clark Kent is not going to be Superman for much longer. And, ooh, the art in this is nice. Who is this? And John Kent might be taking over. A la Daniel Sempere. Semper Sempari? Sempere? Sempere? Uh, this, looks, this looks nice. Um, certain DC books, looks like they're actually going to be moving towards the future state of things that they showed us back in January and February. Hello. And then there is an alternate cover for that by Tedesco. I always love the Tedesco covers. Awesome. And I have a customer, so give me a second. Oh, hey, Noel. What's up, buddy? I miss you, too. Is there anything I can help you guys find? Cool. If you have any questions about the T-shirts, I design and print them myself. If you need a certain size, let me know. I might be able to make one for you. I'm just live streaming, so feel free to interrupt me. Also out this week is Batman Black and White number six, which at first I thought this cover was very confusing, but it's kind of cool. I think the color would be key on this one, but basically you've got Batman kneeling down. Like here's his shoulder, bicep, forearm, his uh, knee here. And then the reflection of him is back in the windows at the skyscraper across the, across the way. It's a really nice design, uh, but it doesn't hold up because it's black and white. I think with all the rain, it looks very confusing, but it's still very, very cool. It's such a weird decision to show us the middle of the story and then circle back to the beginning. Oh, you're talking about Future State. Well, the idea was that Future State was going to be the future, what, 5G, right, for DC? But then Dan DiDio got axed. So now it's called Future State, and I think, I'm not entirely sure they know exactly what they're doing. Another cover for this book, uh, Batman Black and White number six, Jason Fabok. Pretty standard Batman cover. And then another variant cover for this issue by, God, it's not Jill Thompson. Who is this? This is nice. That's a real cool cover. Who is this? John Romita Jr., Jason Fabak, Yasmin Putri. Putri. That's, that's a dope-ass cover. Yeah, the black and white makes it super confusing. It hurts my small brain. Yeah, it took me a second, too. Also out this week, Batman Superman number 18. This run has been awesome. Uh, Jean, Jean Luen Yang has been writing this, and it has been 1940s serial versions of the characters, Batman and Superman, like those old um, black and white serials that they used to run in the theaters. So they're very classic kind of versions of the characters with a modern sensibility. And the, it's drawn by Yvonne Reese. Ooh, highly recommend this one. This is a lot of fun. And it messes with the panel layouts uh, of the comic book. Very, very cool. Okay, still doing all right. Cool. Just checking in. All right. So we got that. And I'm sure there's a variant cover for that as well. Yep. Here we go. I want to say this is Simone Bianchi is doing the alternate cover. Oh, and if there's anything you're looking for I don't have, I might be able to order it in for you. Yeah. Oops.
and more Batman because DC can't stop, won't stop making Batman stuff. Oof. Batman Detective Comics number 1036. And this is by Mariko Tamaki and Dan Mora, which I really want to read. I love Mariko Tamaki and I love Dan Mora, but I haven't read any of the issues of this new series or this new run. Yeah, it's got Huntress. I really got to... Noel, are you reading this? Anyone reading this? Let me know. Because I love this team. I hate black and white art. Don't understand anyone using it nowadays. I love Jason Todd, but I'm not reading Future State Gotham because of black and white. Oh, that's a shame. The Future State Gotham is really cool. It's uh, a manga. It's just straight up manga. Oh, and here's the Detective Comics variant cover. By this guy whose name I always forget. He did Batman Damned. I his name. I guess I could look it up. Ah, oh, they hid the credits on me. Where's the credits? Man, this Dan Mora art. This dude is awesome. I don't know how he's drawing so much. He gets so much done in a month. He's working on multiple books. Oh, Lieber Mayho. That's who this is. Lieber Mayho. Uh, Noel. Thanks, Noel. You got there before I did. How many issues of Detective are out? Is it three with that? I want. That's what I think. Yeah, I think it's only been three issues for this Mariko Tamaki run. Let's see if it tells us how many issues into the story we are. Like, you know, blah, 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 part three. Uh, oh, it's got Clayface. Oh, yeah, The Neighborhood Part 3. So this is the third issue of the Mariko Tamaki, Dan Mora detective. So there's time to catch up. I just have to get off my ass and do it. Dan Mora, once in future, is on hiatus until like August to bake in time for him, it seems. Oh, good. I'm behind on Once in Future. It's another one of my favorite books. And I'm way behind on it. I'm a real jerk. I'm in part I'm a, I'm in a group chat with my mom and my wife, and they're sending pictures of our son back and forth, and my phone keeps dinging. God damn. Although it is pretty cute, the picture. He's doing tiny time. Doing tummy time so you can practice sitting up. And that's him not doing tummy time. I guess he gave up on tummy time. Yeah, they have that picture. Oh, I love it. Look at that picture. So cute. <laughs> Show the, I would like to see the baby. Harley Quinn number three, which I hear is very good, but I haven't read it. Uh, let's see. Phillips. Who wrote this? Oh, Stephanie Phillip and then art by Riley Rosmo. I've heard very good things about this. Very cool cover, too. I like when they play with the title treatment, the logo. Chicky Tendy. That's my Chicky Tendy. He's a Chicky Nuggy, my baby. I call him a Chicky Nuggy. Ah. Oh. Milestone is back this week. Milestone Returns Infinite Edition Zero. Very excited about the return of Milestone. Icon and um, uh, Static, etc. The Milestone universe has been gone for decades. Uh, every so often they'll try a new Static series, but it looks like they're bringing back the whole Icon or the whole Milestone series of books. So I'm very excited about that. You guys should check this out. Um, all right.
<laughs> Noel, there's a blank variant for Milestone, in case you care. Also out this week, Mr. Miracle returns, the source of freedom, number one. An awesome cover. Now, this is not the Mr. Miracle um, that we may know from the Tom King run. This, I think his name is Shiloh. He is a different Mr. Miracle, one that I don't know much about. So I'm curious um, to check this one out. And if you haven't read the Tom King run on Mr. Miracle, highly recommend it. It's one of the best books that came out that year. And there's a variant cover. Who drew this? Yeah. Yelp is calling me. No thanks. Oh, Shiloh Norman. And Morrison created it. That's right, for the seven seven soldiers of victory. Um, how come Static was the only character from Milestone to make it into the DC universe? I don't know. Probably because he was the most popular and he had a cartoon. Hi, yep, go for it. Thank you. You sure you're not looking for something? Uh, I've been like, really stick with, stick with scanning. Cool. Yeah. All right. Uh, Robin number two by Kevin Williamson. I like the first issue. I'll definitely check out the second one. I imagine we'll talk about it on the podcast this weekend. Boop, 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 boop. Let's see. Is there a variant for that? There is. Oh, shit. That's a nice variant. Look at that. By, um, ah, what's his nuts? He did um, the New 52 Flash. My brain is not what it used to be. Francis Manipal did the variant. And there's a Ruby Justice League crossover. I've never read Ruby. R-W-B-Y. It's a manga. And I think it's also an anime series. And they're doing a Justice League crossover. Uh, Stargirl is uh, back in the comics. Took them long enough after having that TV show. And she's got a one shot called the Spring Break Special. If you haven't seen the Stargirl show, uh, that was awesome. That was one of the better CW shows. I really wish they kept Damien spoiler and changed the title to Flatline for the rest of the... Oh, I see. That would have been kind of cool. Christopher, good night. Action figure expert, is it me Is it me, or was there no spoiler alert? Oh, no, we did not do a spoiler alert podcast this past Sunday. Um, slowly, all I got just dropped like flies. So I just wound up doing something else. It's something else with my life for, that, for those two hours. Uh, here's the variant cover. For Stargirl. And see, there's no way to let people know that there's not going to be... Like, I don't know how to let people know in advance. No podcast this week. Except for just, like, posting it on Facebook. I wish there was a way on YouTube to, like, put a little message up. And there probably is. I'm just an idiot and I don't know how to do it. Uh, there's a new book from Scout Comics called Steak. which I assume is a vampire book. Uh, I see. It's all black and white except for little splashes of color, little splashes of red sometimes, splashes of blue. Kind of a cool looking book. Right, that's that stack. 
put out a quick video saying no episode. Um, I don't know. Would people, I guess they would just look at the title that says no episode and it'd be easy enough. People, <laughs> Noel says people should follow Cult Pop Podcast on Facebook to get announcements and we promise to make them there when we have them. Noel, you promised. So you're in charge of making announcements on the Facebook. Oh, speaking of announcements on Facebook, uh, tonight is book club. We're doing uh, the Zoom Me book club for a book called um, Archival Quality. It's a queer YA ghost story book. I have yet to read it. Uh, hopefully I'll get it done before 8 p.m. tonight. Strange Adventures number 10. So this is a 12-ish maxi series and it's going to be wrapping up soon. It is really good. If you haven't read Strange Adventures, it's more Tom King. And there's a variant cover. And, of course, the variant covers for this book always match or they mirror each other. So this one has a... Um, she's wiping the mirror after a shower, and that's what creates the image. And in this one, there's a puddle of blood, and that creates the image. Very cool. Action figure expert. Well, since it's Memorial Day this weekend, are you going to do spoiler alert? Mm. No, are we doing? Sp well, spoiler alert is Monday. I mean, um, Memorial Day is Monday. So I guess we could still do the Sunday morning. No. Are you going to be around Sunday for spoiler alert? And let's see. And then for the last of the single issues from DC, Teen Titans Academy number three, starring, looks like the Suicide Squad. Yep, there they are. Suicide Squad attacks Titan Towers. And the variant cover. Which looks like it's by Philip Tan. Noel says, I'm down to stream as well as work the shop this Sunday. 100% awesome. Thanks, bud. Also, I want to see if there was a new trailer. Oh, Eternals. There was a, yeah, for the new Marvel movie, Eternals. Doesn't really show you much, but it's enough to wet your whistle. Uh, yeah, that's been all over NPR. My favorite thing is Monsters. Yeah, everyone's been talking about that. I haven't read it yet, but apparently it's really good. It's like one of NPR's favorite books this year. Okay. Um, and there's going to be, she's already working on the sequel. Okay. It's kind of cool. It's all drawn in ballpoint pen. Right. Christopher Goodnight says he'll be around for the show. Uh, there are, here's some trade paperbacks from DC. The Batman Dark Knight Detective Volume 5. This is the run that I was growing up reading by Alan Grant and Norm Brayfogle. When I picture Batman, th this is him. This is the Batman I always picture by Norm Brayfogle. Uh, mostly Norm, but then sometimes Neil Adams from the late 70s, early 80s. But this is back when they introduced Tim Drake as the new Robin for the first time. This was a great run. This was a lot of fun. I'm glad that they're reprinting them in like full color. Really nice. Um, oh, yeah. Last Night in Soho and Gunpowder Milkshake. I saw both of those trailers this morning and they both look awesome. Gunpowder Milkshake looks like a lot of fun. And then last night in Soho, I'm really excited for a new... Um, uh, oh, what is his name? Edgar Wright movie. I like that he's doing a psychological thriller. It's very different from Shaun of the Dead and Hot Fuzz. Also out this week, Flesh Impulse runs in the family trade paperback. 
So this is the Mark Wade and Humberto Ramos stuff from the, was it the 90s? I think so. Some classic flash. Then I used to draw impulse with really impossibly large feet for some reason. That was like his whole thing when he showed up. Humberto Ramos would always draw just like huge sneakers. Write an email, St. Saucy, says Noel. Yeah, Chris, where's his emails? So it's not dot matrix art. What's not dot matrix art, Chris? Are you talking about the reprints from the from the 80s and 90s? No, it's just regular coloring. Also, about Superman Mythological Trade Paperback by Brian Michael Bendis and Yvonne Reese. This is probably wrapping up the, the Brian Michael Bendis run. Yeah, this is volume four. Oh, I love Yvonne Reese. He's so good. I love his faces. Very expressive faces. He does a lot of good facial acting with his characters, as opposed to Jim Lee, who, like, you know, Jim Lee's fine, but he draws the same four faces. And then The Authority, book two, by Mark Miller and Frank Whiteley. Seminal run on Authority. Oh, Chris Weston also worked on this. Very cool. Yeah, when this first came out, I used to love the authority. They sort of been snipped a little bit when they joined the DC universe. They're not quite as bombastic as they used to be. All right. I got to see Scott Pilgrim in theaters finally, and it was a completely new experience. Oh, Scott Pilgrim is one of my all-time favorites. It's one of the best comic adaptations out there. Have me on to stream, he says. I can barely get things with the guys we have, let alone adding new streamers. Ramos's feet were overcompensating for Liefeld's little baby feet. Brutal. Ouch. All right. So we got some other stuff. Immortal Hulk. Pop vinyl. It's got a lot of like gamma radiation that you can't really see. And he's also crushing the world. Very cool. This is a, this is a bigger than usual pop vinyl. It's my head sized. And then also got the spider punk statue from the video game. One of my favorite alternate uh, costumes for Spidey. And it came in a little damaged. So the box is all bent to hell, which sucks. So I'm going to report this damaged. And then get one for me. Also, Marvel's been doing, or not been doing, they just started. There's a new thing called um, Museum, the Avengers Infinity War, I guess, I don't know if it's just Marvel Museum, HC Museum. So the little museum displays of the Infinity Gauntlet. And it comes with like a nice little stand as if it's displayed in a museum. So yeah, there's the Infinity Gauntlet. There's Mjolnir. Um, there's the Black Panther mask or helmet. And Captain America's shield, of course. Very cool. I'm not sure how much these are going to be. Uh, I guess I could just look it up. 
Let's see. Marvel Hero. Oh, Marvel Hero Collector Museum. That's what they're called. And they're 40 bucks each. These are pretty good. 40 bucks. All right. Oh, and then I also got. Mondo and Death Waltz Recording presents The Art of Soundtracks. Mondo is famous for doing limited edition reissues of vinyl soundtracks and scores and what have you, but then having new artists create the packaging. So this is an art book of all of their soundtracks. Very cool. This one also came in a little damaged. So the report this damaged as well. Got a little bent up. I hate that. So yeah. Oh, I also got a big ass Spidey mug. I love this mug. It's like, it's not a coffee mug. It's like a soup mug. I don't know what one, like that's a lot. That's a, that's a butt ass of coffee. Um, and then I got another one, which is like a Stein, I guess, for beer. Whoop. And uh, same size as the Spidey one, but it's Freddy Krueger. Again, too big for coffee. Might be good for soup or blood. Depends on how much blood intake. One of the reasons I have a hard time looking at older stuff is the art is hard to look at. Yeah, some of it. Uh, my brother showed his nine-year-old Scott Pilgrim for the first time, and he's obsessed now. This past week, and I gave him all my digest volumes. Also, Noel, they have the color versions. There's like the three color versions that you can get in a big box set. Mars Comics says, hello, GD. Hello, gang. Geez, sorry I'm late. That's all right. Uh, I tried to wait for you, but I had to continue. Ooh, cereal mug. That's a good idea, Noel. You put your cereal in it. Your Fruity Pebbles and whatnots. Uh, all right. Are you guys all set? All right. I'll be right back. There are customers to ring up. Let's see. I had a little thing that said, be right back. Where did it go? Well, I'll be back. Um, six hardback. Oh, yeah, Christopher Goodman. There are six colored hardback versions of Scott Pilgrim, but there's also three color soft covers in a set. Um, okay. So I, I just got my diamond delivery in and I haven't had a chance to like organize it or alphabetize it. Uh, I'm going to crack open and see if there's anything cool in them, but I'm not going to go through the whole, all the boxes. There's three boxes. Also, Noel, Brian called out today 
So if you have any interest in helping me do the subscriptions today, I would, I would, I would take your help. Uh, if not, don't worry about it. If you're busy, don't worry about it. But sometimes you like to show up and help with subscriptions. All right, let's see what we got in this bad boy. Bubble wrap. So that's fun. Shame on Brian. I know, right? He had to go help his 91-year-old grandmother. What a dickhead. He's the worst friend. Um, ah, Incredible Hulk by Peter David. Omnibus. Look at that big old boy. I now have all three. And the first one's out of print. So, yeah. If you need uh, three volumes of this amazing seminal run of uh, Incredible Hulk, you let old Jadles know. Uh, oh, what's this? Star Wars, the 40th anniversary special edition, episode five, The Empire Strikes Back, by, um, it's got, it's got a cover painting by Boris Vallejo from 1980. That is that classic isht. Look at that. So it's like a behind the scenes. Trying to very cool. Oh, this picture of Carrie Fisher. This is awesome. Uh, I was just going to ask. I have some work deadlines later in the day, but I likely got you after. Bomb. Thanks, buddy. Does it have does it have his final issues that came out in the early aughts? Asks Christopher Goodnight. Let's see. This omnibus has. Uh, it looks like it takes you up through the wedding with Marlo. So it's got Incredible Hulk 403 to 435, Annual 19 to 20, Incredible Hulk versus Venom, Hulk Future Imperfect 1 and 2, Tales to Astonish 1, Incredible Hulk Ashcan Edition 1, and material from the Marvel Holiday Special number three. So yeah. So yeah, it, does, it doesn't have the early aughts, I don't think. This is, um, yeah, this is the Rick and Marlo wedding, I believe. No, there is volume four of PAD Hulk coming later this year. Thanks, Noel. And we got some manga, the stories of Edgar Allan... Ooh, that's spooky as shit. The, the stories of Edgar Allan Poe manga. Run the jewels, cool shirt. Thanks, Kevin Brown. Uh, <laughs> my friend Noel gave it to me. Um, we, are, we are friends that uh, once we're done with our t-shirts or they don't fit us, we go, ah, you can have it. And we, we trade them back and forth. Not really back and forth. Really, Noel just gives me his shirts that don't fit him. I don't really give Noel any of my shirts. I don't think he wants any of them. They're, they're all stinky. Uh, so no Tempest Fugit or whatever that arc was called. No idea. I don't know what that arc was. Uh, Fence Disarmed, an original novel uh, for the comic series Fence. And oh, we got a little golden book for Lilo and Stitch. A quick and easy guide to they, them pronouns, which is really cute. Uh, another, oh, that one came in damaged. Another fence novel, but it came in all busted to heck. And then Wake, The Hidden History of Women-Led Slave Revolts. Wake by Rebecca Hall, illustrated by Hugo Martinez. <laughs> 
Part graphic novel, part memoir, Wake is an imaginative tour de force that tells the story of women-led slave revolts and chronicles scholar Rebecca Hall's efforts to uncover the truth about these warriors who, until now, have been left out of the historical record. That's a black and white historical comic. I wonder if we should do this for book club. And you can't feel it, but the texture is very nice. It's grainy. All right, so that's that box. I happened upon the Omnibus for Why the Last Man for $74. It was originally $150. I didn't even know it existed. Surprise! It existed. Why the Last Man's a great series, too. Let's see. Rue Morgue, 200th, the 200th issue of Rue Morgue Horror Magazine. It's been going on for decades. Uh, the Sprite and the Gardener, kind of an oversized hardcover. Um, which really nice style. It's like a little bit um, manga and a little bit Steven Universe. Very cool. This looks awesome. <laughs> there is a prestige edition hardcover of Death or Glory by Remender and Bengal. Rick Remender and Bengal. Remender? Rem Remender. That guy. And up, oh, Last Ronin, number three, comes out this week. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Heroes in a Half Shell, Last Ronin, number three. Um, let's see. Are they all the same cover? Oh, I guess so. All right, let's see. What do we got? I'm going to go, I'm going to blow through these. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on them because there's a whole other box. Let's see. Heroes, Re Heroes Reborn, Magneto, and the Mutant Force. And these aren't in alphabetical order. New Mutants, number 18. Um, 
Shadow, Sir. Shadow Service number eight from Vault. Very cool cover. Made in Korea number one by Jeremy Holt from Image Comics. Heroes Reborn number four, continuing the Marvel event that's going on this month. Heroes Reborn. And then, oh, we got some more trade paperbacks. I got four copies back in of Darth Vader from Charles Soule, my favorite Darth Vader series. And this is volume three. So now I've got one, two, and it's finally back in print after being out of print for uh, a lot of this year. And then, ah, the Chizadarsky and Mark Bagley Spider-Man Life Story trade paperback. This was a story where Spider-Man uh, was created in 1963, so that's where the story starts, but then each issue is another decade, so he ages in real time. So it's basically, what if Spider-Man aged in real time? Kind of cool. All right. The Goddamned, The Virgin Brides, issue five by Jason Aaron and R.M. Wera. Wera? 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 Ah, Marvel's Reptile, number one, who I think I last saw in the Young Avengers. No. Gosh, Avengers Academy. Reptile. Heroes Reborn from 1998. <laughs> yeah, they just used the same title. Basically, this Heroes Reborn is what if somebody somehow... Uh, what happened was someone stopped the Avengers from being created in the Marvel Universe. So Steve was never thawed out to become Captain America again. And so a bunch of that means a bunch of other things are different, including the Squadron Supreme is now Earth's Mightiest Heroes. The Squadron Supreme is like the Avengers. Uh, as we all know, the Squadron Supreme is basically Marvel's Justice League. So, yeah, that's what's going on. So everything is slightly different. It's like Age of Ultron or Age of um, Age of X, Age of Age of Apocalypse. It's like Age of Apocalypse, but uh, you know, throughout the whole DC universe or Marvel universe, and not just um, the X Men. I have a phone call. Thank you for calling Hero Complex. Can I help you? Mm -hmm. uh, you can send it to me. I'm the owner. Uh, my email address is jdsherocomplex at gmail.com. Cool. Thanks so much. All right. Take care. What's up, Paul? Is there anything I can help you find? Cool. I am just live streaming um, an unboxing. So just let me know if you have any questions. Feel free to interrupt me. Hello. Uh, also, the old guard, Tales Through Time, number two of six. Is there anything I can help you find? Cool. Let me know if you have any questions. Yep. Look to your right. There's a sign that says manga. There you go. Thank you for calling Hero Complex. Can I help you? We are. You got it. Bye bye. Okay. Um, Alien number three. Marvel now has the rights to Alien comics. So uh, I think Dark Horse had been doing it before, but now Marvel. So this is the third issue of the new series by Philip Kennedy Johnson and art by Salvador Larocca. Now, if there's anything you're looking for I don't have, I might be able to just order it in for you. What's up? Uh, Champions Outlawed trade paperback. 
where it's basically civil war, but for the teenagers. So now teenage superheroes aren't allowed in the Marvel universe. Uh, another one of the Heroes Reborn crossovers is called Young Squadron, and this is the variant cover. So you've got Miss Marvel, Miles Morales, and Nova, but as different heroes because there never was an Avengers. Uh, let's see. The Blue Flame. Oh, by Christopher Cantwell. So the the showrunner for Halt and Catch Fire, the TV show that I loved, uh, is a comic book writer as well. And he's got a new series called Blue Flame from Vault Comics. Which I have no idea what this is. I ordered it specifically just because uh, Christopher Cantwell wrote it. Have a good one, guys. Uh, Shadecraft number three from Image. Uh, the Game of Thrones comic is still going. And this is Clash of Kings part two. Number 13. Let's see. The Marvels number two by Kurt Busaic. Philadelphia, number 13, which is Vampires in Philly. Number 318 with a Todd McFarlane black and white. Dawn of X trade paperbacks. This is volume 16 of the Dawn of X. Kelly Thompson's Black Widow, number seven. Uh, if you're not reading Kelly Thompson's Black Widow, you should be. It is really, really good. It was actually so good. It was only supposed to be a six-issue miniseries, and then they were like, nah, keep it going. So, yeah, highly recommend that. And that's that stack. I'm sure there's nothing you're looking for. Right. You got it. Nope. I think it's out of print. Okay. Yeah. Monstrous from Image Comics number 34 by Marjorie Liu and Sana Takeda. Bitter Root number 13, which has now been, I guess it's going to be a movie directed by Regina King. So that's kind of cool. Oof. There's a variant cover for Alien number three. I don't know who did it. Oh, it's Adam Kubert. Check that out. That is, that's awesome. It's an interesting take on the um, Xenomorph. Uh, the Star Wars Marvel crossover event, War of the Bounty Hunters, continues. And this is uh, Prelude, Darth Vader number 12. I've been catching up on all the Charles Soule Star Wars stuff that's currently going on, and I love it. Uh, I just got a cover by Aaron Cooter. See you, Noel. Oh, thank you, Kevin Brown. Bitterroot's supposed to be an HBO show. Sorry. My bad. Oh, spiders. So Spider-Man, the what if, what if Spider-Man became Venom uh, called Spider-Man Spider's Shadow. I just got another printing of a number one. 
which is really good by Chip Zdarsky and Pascal Ferry. Nice cover. Justin says, whoa, that alien variant is awesome. Isn't it? Isn't that cool? That Adam Kubert. I never would I never would have thought uh, him drawing the alien would be any good, but he nailed it. Uh, XN number 20 by John Hickman. I'm waiting on the omnibus for the bounty hunter crossover. Yeah, makes sense. The, the crossover is like 33 parts. So I'm definitely going to do an omnibus. And I will definitely pick it up. That's more of the X Men. Dune House of Treaties, number seven. I have never read or seen a Dune, <laughs> any of the Dunes. I've never duned. Maestro War and Pax number five. Really nice Dale Keown cover. Dale Keown had just done a um, the second issue of Heroes Reborn, and I wasn't impressed. Maybe it's just the colorist who makes or breaks Dale. The Many Deaths of Layla Star number one is back in print. Let's see, there's Monstrous again. There's Bitter Root again. Monstrous again, again. Firefly number twenty nine by Greg Peck. The sci-fi western TV show slash movie slash comic book that I love. Ah, here's the regular cover for Young Squadron number one. It's a one shot. So this is the Miles Morales, Kamala Khan, and Nova team, but as different heroes, which I'm really curious about. Oh, yeah, I design and print all the shirts. If you need a certain size, let me know. Abbott, 1973. Spooky 1970s ghost stuff. Ascender 15, or Ascender, by Dustin Nguyen. Let's see, Justin says, Spider's Shadow is great, especially if you like it when Spider-Man straight up murders bad guys. Who doesn't love that? Kill mode. Um... Star Wars Adventures, The Weapon of a Jedi. I don't know what this is, but it looks cool. Based on the novel by Jason Fry. Huh. I'll check that out. Also got back in stock the Star Wars Darth Maul miniseries by Cullen Bunn. This was out of print for the longest time, so it's back in print, finally. Another Heroes, Re Heroes Reborn one-shot, Siege Society. Whoop. Whoop. <laughs> ah, there we go. They're 20 each or two for 35. Uh, is it not up there? Department of Truth number nine. What size is it? All right, Captain uh, Marvel Act and Captain Marvel. 
number three by Sweeney Boo. So yeah, I can take an order and obviously I can't make it for you right now. Um, Why did you make them? Oh yeah. Oh, okay. That's what I was saying. I designed and print all the shirts. Gotcha. Um, I can uh, let you know when it's ready. How long are you in town? We are both from out of state. We're just in town for the week. Right. So you're for the week? Yeah. Great. So I can let you know when it's ready. Well, I'm driving down to DC tonight. Oh, so. We're on the East Coast for the week. Gotcha. So, I can mail it to you. Would that be included in the 20 or 35? Oh, it would be like $5 shipping. Cool. Thanks. All right. Give me a sec, guys. I got to go take a t-shirt order. BRB. Okay, I'm back. Ha! Mm, Jeff Lemire. Is that how you pronounce that last name? Is that... <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, is, is what how you pronounce that last name? Jeff Lemire. Um, D-O-T is such a good book. D-O-T. Department of Truth. There we go. Department of Truth is such a good book. All right. And then, love lifts us up where we belong. All right, action figure. He's quoting songs again. Um, love lifts us up where we belong. Do, do, do. Um, Eric Powell's The Goon, so a bunch of old crap, an omnibus, volume three. 
Marvel Action Classics Spidey Man 2 in 1. Uh, Magneto and the Mutant Force. We already saw that one. Ooh, look at this Patrick Gleason. Oh my goodness. Black Panther number 25. The Gleason variant. Boy, oh boy. That's cool. Ah, something is killing the children. Still, something is still killing the children. Won't anyone stop them? Number 16. Love lift us up where we belong. Skip deep, deep. That's going to be in my head now, Dick. Uh, Marvel a Hero Reborn 4 variant cover with uh, Captain Marvel. Oh, Demon Days X Men reprint of number one. The name on a sender, Dustin Nguyen. Nguyen. Money shot, number 11. Look at all those rumpies and dumpies. Razzum, frazzum. Those rumpy dumps. And top bits, goodness gracious. Sakes alive. Spawn, oh, there's the color version of the Spawn cover we saw earlier from Todd McFarlane. Now, Vasi's Das. This looks like Rat Queens? No, it's Helm Grey Castle. I was wrong. Helm Grey Castle, number two. I love me some Sicitus. Sictic. Sictic. Something is killing the children. Very excited, says Justin. Christopher says, again, a great effing book. Language on you. Unbelievable. You kiss my mother with that mouth. All right, that box is done. We did it. There's still one more box. We're wrapping it up. We got these two boxes, and then we dunzo. Have some bubble wrap. How loud is this? Is this too loud? Is this ASMR? Am I doing ASMR? Am I doing this right? Marvel oversized soft cover. Unforgettable stories from a once in a lifetime assemblage of talent. It's an Alex Ross painted cover there, the nice yellow. Aces. I would take that bubble wrap. $33 a bubble, Sid. 33. It's all yours. Oh, I got a poster. Mother of Madness from Game of Thrones superstar Amelia Clark and Marguerite Bennett and Leela Lees. Lees. Well, that's spooky as hell. Look at that. That's cool. What a nice. That's a. That's a cool poster. Love lift me up where we belong. Up some more comics.
Magneto and the Mutant Force, Crossover Volume 1. If you like Donny Cates and you like comic books, you should read that. Ah, Loki, Agent of Asgard, the complete collection. I've been looking forward to this because it's been out of print. And I heard real good things. Uh, collecting Loki, Agent of Asgard, numbers 1 through 17. Original Sin, 5.1 to 5.5. And material from All New Marvel Now, point one, number one. Written by Al Ewing and Jason Aaron. I'm in. I'm sold. I'm going to do it. I'm going to read that shit. Beta Ray Bill, number three. Number three, yep. By Daniel Warren Johnson. He's like meticulously gluing his little hammer back. Oh, that's sad. But good for him. Daniel Warren Johnson is awesome. If you're not reading Daniel Warren Johnson's comic books, I don't know what to tell you. It should be. Hey, speak per. Were we speaking of purses? Whatever happened to 3D purses from back in the 90s? You know, there's 3D purses you had to serve. What? 3D purses you had to serve. Try that one again. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, Black Panther number 25 with a cover by Daniel Acuna. Ooh, War of the Bounty Hunters, Prelude, Drugs. Yeah, everyone else is going, huh? <laughs> drugs. If you have any Gatorade bills available, please put one aside for me, says Justin Agnew. Justin, you damn fool. Is it not on your subscription? What the hell's wrong with you, boy? Son? I'm putting it on your list. I'm putting it on your subscription, whether you want it or not. It's going on your subscription. Uh, let's see. Uh with that in mind, do you have Beta Ray Bill 1 and 2? So for Justin. You got it, buddy. If I have one, I'm, I should have one. I'll put it in your bin. Cannot wait for Black Panther 25. Coates really stepped it up. I haven't read an issue of Coates' run since number one from like seven years ago. That's not true. I read a couple of issues and I was like, this is really dry and kind of boring for me. Um, but Kevin Brown says it's it's ending well. Oh, well, if it's on your list, you don't have to ask for it, but I'll double check. Posters. He means posters. 3D posters. Hey, speaking of posters, whatever happened to 3D posters from back in the 90s? You know, there's 3D posters you had to serve. I still don't know what I'm talking about. 3D posters. I know, like, Todd McFarlane did, like, they were, like, part of, they weren't action figures, but they were, like, physical reproductions of horror movie posters that were, like, 3D. Oh, you're talking about lenticular 3D posters that would, like, move, like, as you walked past it, it would... It would sort of move a little bit. Those are cool. Um, I never got two, so I thought I was subscribed. So, oh, I think what happened was I never got my issues of number two. Let me check on that. Beta Ray Bill also. Number two, question mark. All right, so War of the Bounty Hunters, Dr. Afra, number 10. 
Ooh, yeah, I remember. Oh, Magic Eye. Uh, the Magic Eye posters where you would like relax your eyes and then you could see the schooner. I remember those. You would stare at it and an image would appear. Yeah. Is that what you're talking about? Amazing Spider-Man Shattered Web, number 12. Brian, and hi, Brian. Brian Anderson says, the first story arc for Coates' Black Panther was across four volumes. He tightened it up after that. Struggled going from prose to comic format, format methinks. Uh, Stray Dogs, number three, which is basically Disney animals meets murder mystery. I hear it's very good. I haven't had a chance to sit with it. And Miles Morales, Spider-Man number 26 by Saladin Ahmed. And this is uh, part two of the Clone Saga. Really fun cover here. This is awesome. very busy because there's a lot of body parts <laughs> but once you parse it out it's very cool summoner's war legacy number two looks like a fun D D esque you know fantasy novel or graphic novel Siege Society. Ah, oh, The Witcher number one of The Witch's Lament of the novel slash video game slash Netflix series fame. Geralt. Geralt? Am I saying that right? Geralt? Hello. Um, and I don't know what this is, but it's in this. It looks very much like um, Calvin and Hobbes. Little Victories, Autism Through a Father's Eyes. A vibrant song of comfort for autism. Beautiful book, both in substance and form. This looks adorable. Maybe we should do this for book club, too. This looks awesome. I'm not crazy, though. That's like a Calvin and Hobbes tree, right? Is there anything I can help you guys find? Um, I pulled a few weeks ago, and I need to... I know something about subscription, setting up some subscription. So you for, set one, you set up a subscription? I didn't. I need to. You need to set up a subscription. I will be back, everyone. Uh, I'm going to go help a customer. Keep yourselves entertained. I'm live streaming. Oh, yeah. I do a live stream every Tuesday. I show
one. Yeah, feel free to let me know if you need anything. I'm back. Uh, let's see. No, no. Have you ever seen mall rats? Remember that poster? Yeah, that's what we're talking about. You relax your eyes and then you can find the image inside the really busy poster. Definitely a Calvin and Hobbes homage. Thank you, Molly. Oh, get my text this morning. I wanted to know if you could come in. You did. You responded. Yeah, I'll head over after work. So 530. I didn't even see that. Did not register. Um... May want to bleep this part and not dox your customer. Oh, you can hear that? Mm -hmm. Next time I will mute it. That's that box. That box is done. Last box. One more. Well, the only thing in that is uh, previews. So just so you know how comic shops work, you can get a previews magazine um, catalog and it shows you most of the things that are going to be coming into the comic shop. You can order. That's how you pre-order. So you go through it and you say, oh, I want this issue and I want that issue and I want this action figure and I want this comic book um, or trade paperback, T-shirt, etc. And that's how you get your local comic shop to make sure you don't miss the things that you want to read. For instance, Echo Lands number one by J.H. Williams is a brand new series. That looks awesome. Maybe you'll want that. Um, and also let you know about Free Comic Book Day. Looks like John Ridley is going to be, oh, John Ridley is going to be taking over the Black Panther. So they're restarting number one. And John Ridley, who's been doing an awesome job with the uh, other history of the DC Universe, he is going to be taking over Black Panther, and I will absolutely check that out. So, yeah, that's it. We did it. So Molly's going to come over after 530 to help out. Noel might come over to help with subscriptions. Thanks, guys. Uh, to watch the baby so that um, Sushan can go to uh, Target. And I guess that's it. We're done. We did it. It's our first live stream in weeks. It's been a while. Sorry about that. I've been moving and shaking. Uh, yeah, Kevin Brown for Black Panther. John Ridley, he's awesome. Uh, Kevin Brown, if you're not reading the other history of the DC Universe, you absolutely should be. It is awesome. Highly, highly recommend it. Uh, uh, they'll be doing a, a collection short, you know, as soon as it's done, I'm sure. But uh, the first, each issue is a look at the DC universe through the eyes of like a POC, a person of color. Uh, the first one is all about Black Lightning. The second issue is Bumblebee and Malk. The third one is Katana. And the fourth one, which comes out this week, is um, ah Renee Montoya, uh, The Question. She started off as a character in, you know, just a Gotham detective. And then eventually throughout you know, 10 years, 15 years, she became the current question, new question. So awesome, awesome series. And sort of in, it's written in prose with uh, big double page spreads. Um, and so it takes a while. It's kind of meaty. It's, um, it's dense. It takes a little while to get through, but boy, is it rewarding. Highly recommend that book. Uh, oh, I am says Kevin. Oh, I am. I like the way you, oh, I am. Uh, there's some of the realest comics I've ever read, right? There's been a couple of times where it's like I've caught my breath a little bit because I was like, oof, oh, that is that is too real. Um, all right, guys, that's it. We did it. We're done. Uh, Montoya was great in Gotham Central. You you right. Um, all right, guys. Uh, some of you I will see at book club tonight. We're going to be talking about archival quality, which reminds me I have to go read archival quality. <laughs> I haven't read it yet. Um, but hopefully I'll be able to get it done in time for book club. And that's it. I'm going to go work now.